Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode of the EV Show. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit about our power wall and how we're getting energy from the sun, storing it in some batteries and driving our vintage vehicles with it. Let's get started. All right, everyone, thanks again for joining us for the EV show. Today, we're gonna to do something a little different. Instead of highlighting a car, we're actually gonna highlight our gas station or our fuel station, better known as our solar power wall, the EV West power wall. You might've seen it on the internet. Jehu Garcia has been out here. He's done videos on it. We've had other people kind of cover it. And even though we don't sell the components for the power wall, uh, we wanted to highlight it because it's been seen in a lot of our videos. We get a lot of emails asking us questions about it. So we'd figure uh, before the end of the year, during the holidays, happy holidays, everyone. We'd just do a quick video, show you our power wall and get back onto doing episodes on cars and some educational stuff coming in 2021. So we've got some really neat things coming in 2021 for the EV show. We're gonna finish out 2020. I think everyone's just ready to be done with this year already. Um, and we're gonna check out our power wall. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna give you a quick overview of all of the components so it kind of makes sense. Uh, on our roof, we have 18 panels. I think they're about two, 230 or 240 watt panels. They're actually pretty old by today's standards. They're polycrystalline instead of the monocrystalline, so they're not the most efficient. But despite all that, we are actually blown away by how much energy we've gotten out of this over the past couple years. So. Real quick on the componentry, we have our uh, J1772 charger right here. It's just a regular level two charger, operates 220 volts. We have our MPPT solar charger. So the maximum power point solar uh, charger, it basically gets the maximum load from the panels from the roof. And the DC wires come down through here. We've got a little fuse panel and they go through here and then go into our MPPT. So uh, after the MPPT, the energy comes out of here and goes over to the battery. So this is essentially our battery charger directly from the DC power from the panels on the roof to here. This is 33 kilowatt hour of the smart Tesla battery. We're using the three kilowatt hour modules. We have 11 of them in here. It runs at a nominal 57 volts. Um, and when we're cranking away, you know, right now we're doing about 1.7 kilowatts. So it's already gone into its, its uh, curve, it's charge profile, it's kind of tapering back. But when we're in the middle of it, and we're pulling five or six kilowatts out of this, we're at about 150 amps coming out of the battery pack. The cables get pretty warm, everything gets nice and warm, um, but it's very capable of charging at these higher rates. And the, the nice thing about that is all day long, we're just kind of trickle charging the batteries. We don't need high power or high current from our solar panels. We store that energy in the battery and then we're able to charge the car in a very, you know, at a high current rate in a short time. So the heart of any good power wall system is the inverter, because this is gonna limit how much current you can actually get out of your system. And uh, we have this one here, I think it's rated for a peak uh, 4.8 or like six, this is a six kilowatt model. It will do more than six kilowatt, actually. We've had it well over six kilowatt. On hot days, it will, trip on us it will it will bonk out and say hey i'm a little too hot uh, like all electronics they just want to stay cool um, but for the most part this will charge any of the vehicles here most everything here has a six kilowatt or less onboard charger so you really want to make sure that your inverter is at least capable of providing enough power to power the onboard charger in your vehicle if you don't do that then then you're not really going to be able to use your power wall to charge your vehicle and do other things in your shop and you're not going to get your money's worth out of it so far we've had this system i think it's been up and running for maybe four years now um, i'm not really sure we don't have an exact date on it 
Um, I know when we built it, we built it cheap and we used a lot of uh, used older equipment. The date on our inverter is 2013, so the inverter now is over seven years old. And uh, uh, looking at the logs on our MPPT, it keeps a log in here. We're at uh, almost 15 megawatt hours, 14.7. So 14,700 and some change kilowatt hours have come out of this. And based on the efficiency of the vehicles that we drive, that translates to roughly 58,000 miles driven off of our power wall completely free. Uh, other than the cost of the equipment, but the equipment's been great. We haven't had a single failure, not a single item in the power wall has let us down. Our batteries are still going strong. Uh, the balance is really good on them and the capacity is real healthy. So uh, yeah, so after years of use, almost 60,000 miles driven, uh, our power wall is still going strong. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the battery box and take a look inside. All right, so this shows the interior. It's pretty simple. We just have 11 of the batteries arranged. We've got our bus bars over here and uh, we have an internal fuse and we have a safety cutoff switch down there. It's just about everything that you need. Woo, feel that? That's 60 volts right there. I just felt it going through me. Just wanna show that some of these lower voltages, the DC current, uh, I'm not gonna go out of the way and call it safe, but I think it's not as dangerous as some people think. And they think if you uh, have some DC current run through you, it's, it's gonna be a big event, you're gonna be shocked. Um, but the DC is actually less painful and a little harder to, to get a response out of you than the alternating current or the current of the grid that's grounded to the earth. So, um, so this is the internals, again, 60 volts across here. As when I touch that, I actually feel it, it's tingling in my hands. Anyways, we have a lot of fun with this. One thing I wanted to point out, we have our BMS connectors down here and periodically about uh, once a quarter, about every three or four months or so, we'll come through and we have a little diagnostic um, tool that we plug in and it gives us the balance across each cell and each module. And we try to keep, um, well, we haven't had to do any maintenance and our cutoff point is around 20 to 30 millivolts out of balance. And without any BMS whatsoever, this system has been operating within um, about 10 millivolts of voltage, delta voltage. And it just kind of goes to show, now we're not condoning that you run without a BMS because we are monitoring this, but we're monitoring it manually. But it does go to show that a, a good battery and a good installation won't vary in voltage, right? It's gonna stay very similar to all the other batteries in there. And this is kind of neat because we don't have a monitoring system on it. We don't have any electronics pulling any energy out of the cells in the middle of the pack. So this is about as good as you can get with running a live experiment on how well your batteries will stay balanced over the years. And please keep in mind, these are the original Tesla built smart car batteries. These were manufactured in 2010. So these batteries now are a decade old and they're still staying completely in balance the whole entire time. So fantastic battery, fantastic chemistry. And it just kind of goes to show that, um, you know, really a good battery is going to stay in balance. A good battery is not going to go out of balance on you or self discharge. So typically when you have those issues, it's more of a characteristic of maybe a battery that's not really good, or you might have a cell uh, internally in your module that's self discharging. It's causing it to go out of balance. So a good battery, a typical battery should not go out of balance like that. And, um, and this just kind of helps galvanize that point. All right, just a couple other things worth mentioning. Um, we do hook up our power wall to this roving pedestal out here. BTC Power was kind enough to set us up with a dual, uh, dual charger, dual post charger. A lot of times we'll have more than one car out here. We've got Johnny's i3 over there and there's usually a couple other electric cars back here. So this is nice so we can split uh, the load from the panel and charge several different cars or two different cars at the same time, which is kind of nice. So we did plug this in and it's on a long extension cord so it can go out to the corner of the parking lot and charge cars out there. Uh, just wanted to go over, I guess, you know, we get asked a lot, what do these systems cost? So I'm just gonna give you a rough idea, kind of a ballpark. Um, I think these brand new are around $700. Everything in here we bought used, believe it or not. We bought all this stuff off of eBay, but I think you can pick these up typically for around $500 for the charge controller. A good inverter like this will generally run around $2,500, about $2,000 to $2,500. Uh, this box was about $700. This box was about $50. Uh, the chargers run about $500. 
And then the cells inside of here, I think we're selling for somewhere around $600 a module right now. So, you know, you got a six or $7,000 in batteries. That's clearly the most expensive part of it. The rest of the components you can round out for probably less than $10,000, including the batteries. And then of course you have uh, your panels. And I, I think our panels at the time maybe ran $1,700, $1,800 or something like that. And now you can get so much more bang for the buck. The, the price drop on the solar, the solar panels over the past couple of years has been substantial. And so I think you get a savings there. So all in today's prices, if we were to rebuild this today, I think it would cost us somewhere around probably in the neighborhood of 10 to $12,000 to rebuild this. And to give us what 60,000 miles of free driving is, is pretty good. And it's probably got at least another, oh gosh, a couple hundred thousand miles in it. I would think there's nothing on here that's even close to wearing out or showing any signs of its age. So, all right. So anyways, that just about wraps it up for our power wall. We just wanted to share some details. We get a lot of questions about this. So uh, if you have any, you can post them down below in the comments. And um, just wanted to say from all of us at EV West, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining the EV show. Uh, we had a great year. We're really looking forward to getting back on track with 2021. I think everyone is. Enjoy your holidays. And from the EV show and everyone, we'll see you next year. <laughs>